Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to C2L. I'm Swami Day. I'm Kalpa. Welcome to Chennai to Lagos. Welcome, welcome. I'm happy about this video, but before you do anything, like, subscribe if you're new here so you don't miss out on what's happening. Today's a very special video. I say that for every, every single thing. Video. But hey, we're doing a story time. We've not done a story time in a while, right? Yes, it's, it's been It's been a forever. minute. Yeah. It has. A few months ago, not a few months ago, about nine months ago, we had our wedding. Uh, we put up the video, which is doing ridiculously well on the internet. It's our mm -hmm. most watched video with over three million views. Yep. And, um, you know, we realized that, wow, you know, despite how amazing the whole process was, um, there's a lot that people don't know even like our family members, you know? So yeah. we thought that, you know, how about we do a story time to really dig into the things that you guys don't see on the camera. Yeah, like the behind the scenes. Exactly. Coming to the date of the wedding. Yeah. And like the stuff that we had to, I don't know, uh, process and deal yeah. with as a couple. And like you said, I think even our own family, um, they know maybe 50% exactly. of, of what we were going through of at the, the time. Story. Um, and ever since after we put up the video and like of course you know we were married and like we moved to our place um, Life just moved on yeah. But like I think finally I feel a bit settled Yeah A bit centered uh, Compared to the last few months you know I feel like we found our, our space mm. And I'm just like reflecting and I'm, I was telling Tom the other day How did we do this and you know how yeah. did we get past that And looking back is like it was a huge mountain um, yeah. for us to cross so we're like let's Long talk about it this is, this is, yeah let's talk many, about it many many and maybe there are people out there who are on the journey to getting married yeah um some are close looking for your person whatever it may be you know so you can use our story as like um it is possible story right yeah. it's possible <laughs> yeah story yeah. yeah so you guys stick around let's tell you the truth about what really went down with our wedding yes So to begin the story properly, it's important that we take you guys back to when um, this whole journey of our wedding and YouTube began. Uh, YouTube is actually a very, very important part of this story. So let's go back to mid 2020. It was a pandemic. Um, and to be very honest, now that we've, when I reflect on it, I realize it was a very scary period. Um, I don't think I may have acknowledged it at the time because like work and things, you know, to some extent, at least I found things to do. But at the back of my mind, we all really felt like the world was about to end. You know, it was it was a really, really crazy period. And I think during that period, because you were indoors, uh, even though I used to do remote work from the beginning, but because you were at home more often and stuff like that, we had more time to talk about certain things and reflect on certain things. And during this season, we really felt press in our heart that, hey, start a YouTube channel. And it's something that had come out before, right? It's something that we knew that we wanted to do. But I guess because now of the whole pandemic, like, what else are you doing? You had, we had the time, you know, and it was easy to listen. And so, yeah, you know, we we're like, all right, God, we hear you. We are going to do this thing. And we made a decision to start. And that happened towards the end of 2020. Mm. And we began that journey. Well, this is a very, very important part because um, you will see how this connects down the line. Mm. Another very important element before we dive into this story was that not long after the YouTube journey began, I proposed to this hot thing over here, <laughs> right? And the funny thing is this, I realized, and we did a video about that. Um, we'll put the link there. We realize that there's a difference between being engaged in a Western, you know, context, which is, I guess, what I'm more familiar with, and a traditional engagement. Now, I understand the traditional engagement from a Nigerian point of view, but when you bring an Indian and Nigerian together, what do you want us to do? So like, many how do we how do we go about that, right? So, in our case, the Western approach just seemed like the easiest way, like a trade-off. But I found out very very quickly that. Um, in the Indian culture, an engagement is not like it's not like that. Engagement involves the family. So while my intention was pure and very, very, um, I guess, colonized by Western, you know, um, depictions of how proposals should be. Basically, there was a disconnect between what an engagement meant to us and I guess what the tradition depicted engagement 
was meant to be and uh, we were kind of in a limbo state that okay uh, yeah you guys are engaged but okay what happened so we ended end of ended 2020 um, with two great things first of all we were engaged but confused about what next and we had a YouTube channel yes it was it was so new yeah. I think we had like 100 subscribers oh my god those are the amazing days right yes yeah. I was so happy with our 100 you know? subscribers so that's really where it all began but why is this important 2021 comes we've moved from the city we've moved to coast and um, now we're at a point where okay we got engaged right when is the wedding or what is the plan for that and I feel like for the first few months like we were just quiet about it uh, like towards the end of 2020 towards now the beginning of 2021 it was really one of those things like okay we know we're engaged we know this is meant to lead to something but when is that going to happen? And um, there was a lot of confusion on that yeah. part, right? Um, but then, wifey over here came one of those days and she was like, listen, we need to put a foot down and do that. And yeah, we came up with the whole date thing. Yeah, uh, I remember we were just praying about it and a date just came to mind, you know? And we decided yeah. we're going to pin that date. And it um, conveniently was on a Saturday. Yeah, it was on a Saturday. I don't. It, it wasn't our intention to go look for a Saturday. Exactly. That was perfect. We just found the date, and yeah. so it was. It really called to us, and yeah, and so we pinned the date. That was it. That was it. Yeah. So finally, we have a date, and uh, it's like okay, now we're working towards something. So I shared it with the fam over here. Um, but looking back at it, we didn't really give enough heads up. I remember like years ago, they'll say, if you're ever getting married, just let us know in advance. Now we're letting people know like a few months, you yes, know, before yes. the whole thing. So everything was a bit tight. But the good thing is, okay, fine. We had shared the date. Um, so family on this end knew. But um, do people know on that end? Yeah, at some point I did tell my mom yes. that we have a date and... Um, my mom was like, uh, she needed to do her due diligence. Yeah. And if you're from an Indian home, you know what that is, which is astrology. <laughs> mm. So she's like, I need to go check if that's a good date. So she did and it confirmed on her end. And yeah. she said, actually, yes, it, it happens to be a good date, an auspicious day for you guys. Mm. Um, so she, I wanted someone from my family to be the one to share with the rest of the family yeah. instead of me. Uh, just so I can correct the mistake we did during the engagement mm -hmm. process. So my mom was like, you know, uh, leading that process. Yeah. 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 So I think at this point, it was a great thing because we had a date um, that really just didn't drop out of anywhere. We felt like this was God telling us that, yo, you guys going to get married on this day. Mm -hmm. And um, all these other stars started to align, you know, everything started to be okay. Amma was like happy about the date. So at least we had something moving. The next thing, obviously, if you're having a wedding, is a location, right? Mm. So all the ideas that we had before, like, we realized that, okay, this is going to be a lot more complicated. Yeah, I think the, the backdrop to this is that before we got married, we had, like, different expectations on mm. what the day would look like. And understandably, because we hadn't been married before to know we the realities of, oh. like, you know, um, getting a location, especially yeah. during a pandemic. Mm. Um the, the government policies were still there um, and yeah figuring out catering that's when the, like you know it really gets specific yeah. and also a bit scary because you're like wow we're really mm. getting married out here mm. um, so yeah we had like a couple of options but we couldn't just settle you know mm. do we want to do this at home do we want to do it somewhere else yeah. you know and then we started to do pros and cons and it was a whole thing the other thing about the location was also it was tied to of course how much and mm. you know the budget for the location and so um the reality was you know because the time between us deciding the wedding date and the day itself was like not that much um it was a very small gap yeah just a couple of months so we decided that we won't wait for things to happen um then determine where we would have the wedding mm. you know what i mean um in terms of finances so we decided to just make it happen for ourselves with what we could do mm. in our power at the time um, in terms of like our own budget and our own funds together and that kind of thing so that's how we now ended up landing on the location that you guys saw on 
yeah the wedding video but a very important thing is that understand at this point it's not like we had like a budget for the wedding one of the things that happened yeah. is we had gone to all our friends and asked hey so how did you guys go about your wedding? And one of the first things everyone tells you is you need to have a budget. Now, this is the thing. We really didn't have a budget, right? But we knew all these things that we wanted. So we had this dilemma. Do we wait for a budget to be created before we find the things that we want? Yeah. Or do we find the things that we want mm-hmm. and then just trust that the budget will find itself there on time? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that is it the latter or the former? The latter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the latter was our approach, right? Yeah. So yeah, basically, we find this hotel and, um, you know, somebody referred, referred them to us. We met, we met with the manager and I can't explain it, but it was so smooth. It just seemed like, okay, wow, this is possible. They showed us around, we saw everything and we had picked a location initially, you know, near the water. Um, but as time went on, we realized that, yeah, it was going to be very, very windy. Mm-hmm. So we couldn't do that. But basically, yeah, we found the location. And then now we're like, okay, right now we're on this YouTube journey, right? It would be nice if we found somebody who could really do a good job. The hotel gave us a contact for a videographer and we randomly just, you know, took that up, right? Mm -hmm. Had a meeting and we clicked with them. And then uh, we needed to find like a wedding planner or something. Imagine we didn't even have a wedding planner. We were the wedding planners. Yes, you know, it was quite chaotic, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and at this point now, so the hotel as well, they gave us a wedding planner. So we were like, wow, okay. These are pretty much all the things we would need. Did we have all the money together at that point? Well, not exactly, but at least we knew that we had the things that we needed yeah. for that, yeah. right? Um, but then this is now the crazy part. While all of this was going on, we've informed our lines um, and things and it's evident that because of the restrictions families couldn't come from outside and we were at that point we were like okay um, do we wait for things to you know to line up but everyone just said that no you guys need to continue because if you you know if you move that date once you can just continue moving it you know mm-hmm. down the line indefinitely so yeah we um, you know stuck with that date and so we had our line, you know, we had a bunch of our friends who were going to be a part of our line. And um, now, right when we're arranging for things to happen, we realize that there's a lockdown. So we are in the coast, they're in the city, in Nairobi, and they can't come down. There was an intercity, intercity lockdown, yeah. but also like there was a lockdown uh, in international traveling exactly. as well. So which meant our line could not come. And family. Um, and our even our family friends in the city could not come mm. and then our family in both nigeria and india could not come yeah. you can imagine so at this point we're like we're wow. like okay so i think it's just going to be us for me all and dad like <laughs> all right this wedding will just be like eight or seven whatever it is we'll make it happen you know yeah and it was really difficult because i couldn't what i worried most was of course my parents you know um they are the most important people to have come from that side. Uh, so I didn't have the heart to tell them, you know, I just pretended like everything was still in motion. I kept telling them, don't worry, even if there's a lockdown, maybe something, maybe something will happen. And, you know, we can bring you guys at the last minute or something like that. Um, of course, at that point, we didn't know the the air travel budgets had gone up. Yeah. Because, of course, you know. And the, uh, some the airlines weren't even doing anything at yeah, that point it was you know um there were also the restrictions on india side mm, that yeah. you know were beyond our understanding at that point um so we just we just i just kept giving them hope mm. you know as the days kept nearing i was just like what is happening like yeah you know my parents aren't here um so it's really a difficult time and then my mom called me um so, uh, so during this time we were like hard in prayer and we we're just like you know we don't want to break people's hearts we don't want to feel like we excluded people that are so close to us you know and so we just needed wisdom on how to like do the right thing you know um and at that very time my mom called me and she's like you know we talked about this you and my uh, you and your dad and um we think you shouldn't push the wedding date because that was an option at that point 
um, we think you shouldn't do that because it's just going to we don't know when all this is going to end and it's just going to be really long process to get everything started and you guys have already started the process of looking for the location and stuff so she was like you know what i want you to get married on that said day i don't want you to stress about us coming because it is nearly impossible for us to leave this country right now and get there and we don't know all the restrictions in between but more than restrictions was their safety that's very important and at that time air travel safety was just you don't want to expose your parents yeah. to stuff right so um they are the ones who literally gave me the go ahead and they were mm. like don't stress about us we will watch it online you know and um it doesn't matter like you have a date and we are happy for you guys to be getting married so just go ahead and like that was like the biggest you know roadblock that we yeah. were feeling at the time and just just went away on its own and you know i didn't have to tell my parents i didn't have to make them feel like they were not going to come they kind of figured it out on their own and i think it was so beautiful because i was like really i was really sad it was such a sad time because as i was planning my wedding i was also equally like happy and sad at the same time and it was so confusing there were moments of like oh my god i'm getting married and then there were moments like i don't have these people with me you know mm. um so it was like this bitter sweet mm. feeling but when i got that approval from my parents to like go ahead without me even pushing them i feel like okay it was like a you know a moment yeah. of relief yeah and something very important that also happened during all of that is that all this time remember we talked about the engagement right our families hadn't really got in together yet and yeah. it felt like is everyone really on board is this thing really <laughs> happening and around that time we had a meeting with the families and everyone came together and we were like oh my gosh this was literally a few weeks before the date right and so we started to realize our oh, wait wow this is something we had been praying for and it happened in such an easy way you know our parents it was a beautiful moment and we have a video about that as well you know it's it was such a beautiful moment for us seeing all of our family members come together yeah. and it really made it feel like it's real and i won't lie during the spirit I actually felt like it wasn't going to happen. It's actually you that were you were really giving me like that hope and faith because you know as it got closer and it's like things weren't aligning I'm like is this thing really going to happen? Things were falling apart. But Kalpo was like no, we're just going to God is going to move all the rocks in our way. We just have to keep on doing what we're doing and you know we just kept at it like all right, we'll just continue moving blindly and uh you know what if this is the date that you've given us it's going to happen. and something very very important happened around this time first of all the closer we got the government lifted the intercity interstate yeah. curfew yeah yeah so it went from having only 100 people and then it went down to 15 people yeah and and that was the lockdown was still there so it was 15 people from within where you are yeah and then like two days no like about a, a week, week or a week so a weekend before our wedding Yeah, something like something yeah. as dramatic as that. I know weekend. because it was so it was so weird because my bridal line they didn't know if they were coming or not, but they just continued working as if yeah, they, were. they were. It was so beautiful, like yeah, made of honor. Faith. Yeah, she just kept pushing people. Get your dresses, get your accessories, get your shoes, and they're even like, "Are we even going to go?" And she's like, "Don't worry about that. Just keep doing your thing," you mm-hmm. know. And like as we kept doing, as we kept preparing. um the government removed the intercity lockdown. I honestly believe that that thing was done for us. Yeah. I honestly believe because there was it didn't even make sense how it happened the time that it happened. Yes. It, it was just so so convenient. And we just started to say that wait. I was these... on my phone just calling and I see the news that now you can travel from oh here to gosh. here in Kenya. And so I call my uh, my ladies and I'm like you know you can come for the wedding, right? And they're like, no, there's still a lock. I'm like, check the news, and yeah. everybody was like, oh my god. And then that's it. They got a car. They just jumped. Everybody jumped. Everything just started to fall in yeah. place. But the most important one. Remember, we talked about where we started this thing. We started YouTube, right? We felt like it was going to happen. But at the beginning of 2021, a very very important part of this story is that there was a movie. that came out called Namaste Wahala on Feb 14th on February 14th yeah. right on Netflix now there was a lot of talk about it because it was a movie about an Indian guy and a Nigerian lady mm. and around this time 
because of the hype and how unique the story was, BBC wanted to do a cover on it and find actual couples. So a BBC reporter went on YouTube and searched for a couple, a Nigerian and Indian couple, and guess who they found? The search engine like literally served her our channel. <laughs> and they came to us. Yeah. And from that, we got an interview with BBC in preparation for the movie. And or right after we watched the movie, right? And um, one of our videos, our How We Met video, that's the first time I started to see what YouTube could do, it going viral. The video just started getting views, views, views. Like our channel just started to blow up. It like blew every up overnight. Over like every single second. Like just I was looking at the subscriber count. It didn't make any sense. Everything just started to blow up. And we realized that, oh my gosh, something is happening. Now one of the things that you have to understand about YouTube is that you have that YouTube has conditions for you to start making money. You need to have a thousand subscribers. You need to have a certain Four amount of you know watch time. watch watch, uh, watch time, right? Um, so we had gotten that early in the year, but we hadn't actually started getting the money from it. Yeah, there wasn't much money. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, it hadn't happened. There's like a yeah. there's just something that I can't remember what happened, but we weren't able to collect the little that we had. Yeah. But guess what? Right, like a week before the wedding. All this attention that we're getting had translated into actual tangible money and money hit the account a lot of money hit the account and it was such an important moment for me because i was so emotional because we started this journey clueless like how are all these things going to work out uh, we weren't going to wait for anything but we just kept on taking that step and who would have imagined that that cash would have been what we used to start all these things. So all these guys, the hotel, the videographer, all of these things we were able to start putting. And during that, as that started to happen, now even our contributions, this and that, and everything just came together in such an easy and relaxed manner. And, you know, if anything, it just really built like my faith of like, wow, that's why God told us to start this channel. Like who would have thought that by starting this channel, it would have become one of the things that we needed for that right particular day, time. that right time. And it happened precision timing. Like it, you, you can't make this stuff up just on time, just on time. And right after that, you know, a line is moving and then we start to realize that, okay, good. Things are opening up, but then we had issues with our outfits. Yeah. I didn't have a wedding dress. Uh, this is, this is weird. I didn't have a wedding dress until like one day before the wedding. I didn't do my fitting. I all I rushed to like to get the parcel. We didn't even know if the parcel had arrived, so I had a backup, just a white dress yeah. that I would wear. So I I remember like some people calling me after the wedding, and they're like, "Your dress was so beautiful, girl. How much did you spend on it?" And I was just like laughing because I I I spent like whew, very little. Like very little in the grand scheme of wedding dress costs um, yeah. on my wedding dress, and I didn't even do my fitting. Like I remember the day before, mm. the girls were just like putting me into the dress and like you know doing the corset stuff, yeah. and that's when we were like, okay, fine, okay, this is it, this is it, and that's when we were actually figuring out the dress a day before the wedding, and it wasn't intentional. It was just that I had to order everything online. Yeah. So um, this, the dresses I wanted were outside and for them to be shipped would we don't know and yeah. the, the the shipping at that time was also very unpredictable because of the pandemic mm. so i wouldn't want to order something pay the money and then it comes after the wedding exactly right so i had to look for something inside here and even that was difficult because there was something i was looking for and i couldn't find it mm. and it was just crazy and then one day i was on instagram and i found the dress and i asked my maid of honor what do you think and she's like this is too good to be true I was like, no, listen, we have to take the step of faith. So I paid and they sent it like that same day, but it arrived like three days later because the package was big because it's a wedding yeah. dress. And like literally on our way for rehearsals at the location a day before, we were like scrambling around to get the package. It's, it, honestly, it's so crazy. Imagine. Now, another thing is that I didn't have um, a Nigerian outfit to wear. I didn't want to wear one of the old things that I had on my wedding day. It wouldn't look right. And a Nigerian and Indian wedding, it was my dream to at least have both of us dress up in our cultures. Um, and I started to get really discouraged, but then, you know, 
she's an amazing at finding things online. I'm always online. On Instagram and all these other places, right? And she found a place and she showed me some of the stuff in Nairobi. I'm like, are you willing to take the chance? And uh, yeah, we call them. Imagine I've not, we don't have context. We don't know anyone that has been with them, you know, and it's just really just this blind trust. But we called, we gave them the measurements. We told them what we wanted and they delivered. And I got it literally also a day before the wedding. Yeah. And same from my traditional, like the sari and everything that you see. I didn't actually even go to get them. Like my friend in the city, she went and she shopped everything that was needed from accessories. They were so kind to go ahead and even like think about some things I would need that I wouldn't think about mm. on the day. And they packaged it and sent it to me. And they're like, this is our gift to you. Mm. Traditional wear for your wedding. And you know, like just thinking about this, there were so many things, right? That we just didn't have, but it all started to fall in place. Even like the band, you know, we had gone out one time. We didn't know who we were gonna have, and then we saw there's this musician in Nairobi, in Kenya, called Lisa Odua, and uh, she plays with a friend of mine called Sidar. And we heard them at this. We were like, no, these guys have to be at the wedding, and they were at the wedding. And like Lisa's an amazing artist. She has a project out. This is not sponsored, but hey, check her out. Amazing artist, and we were able to have them, you know, and just. I think the point is every single thing that looked like it was not going to work out started to fall in place. Even on the day of the wedding, of course we play, we sorry we paid for plates. Yeah. Food, right? So we knew exactly the number of people coming. So we paid per plate plus the vendors like the photographers and videographers. But on the day, the vendors were more than the guests <laughs> because of the restriction. So like the vendors were so many, like I'm almost equal to the guests yeah. and because each of the vendors brought help or you yeah. know that kind of thing so i was just sitting at the reception not able to eat my food because i was so excited but i'm looking around and i'm like who are all these people and they I were there for them. us that's now that's the part that shocked me like wait these guys are here for us we had all these yeah. cameramen i'm like yo i don't remember talking to any of these guys we got a drone i don't know where I'm the like, drone came from where did all these guys come <laughs> right? from how you so know? we look and we see all these people and i'm just like in my heart my heart just sinks in like what are they going to eat we mm. paid per plate i don't want them to go home yeah. hungry so i was trying to figure out the math as we as we were at the reception i'm on my phone calculating the math mm. to see what the balance would be so if i could request the hotel to like you know give them yeah. food and then you pay off later or something and at that very time the manager comes and he says the manager of the hotel comes and he's like listen we noticed you have a lot more people and my heart was like it's like but don't worry we have a lot more food so everybody's catered for mm. don't worry about the cost and i was just like wow yeah thank you lord because yeah. i didn't want people to go home hungry you know yeah. so it was so beautiful because he was so kind to just be like there's a lot more food why should anybody like yeah. you know anybody else would have been like hey pay up mm. but he was so kind and so it was just a favor you know? it really was and i think that that really is a story and i think the reason why we felt that it is important to do this is that um, when you see videos and things like that, it's always one-sided, right? You know, you see comments like, wow, you guys must have spent millions on this. And <laughs> yeah, you know, it, yeah, you feel nice with the comments, but you realize that like, wow, you don't really know the half of it. And why we felt it's important to share the stories because um, this was the beginning of our journey, right? Together as husband and wife. And the very first, how our wedding even came to be was a miracle and a half everything fell in place and it just lets you know that yeah um even if the world did not want to support you and i as far as it was us and god in the mix like yo that's the majority man like that's enough for things to happen and we just saw how us having that faith to just step out agree this is what's going to happen not waver on that and as we began to do that literally all the things that were obstructions just started to fall and now that video is online and has 3 million views and is our biggest video. Basically, that video is the culmination of our journey of faith in this journey. Yeah. Journey I, of I, faith in this life. wedding life. Just, yeah, you get the point. But yeah, yeah. Well, we just felt it was so important to share yeah. that because, you know, I guess on one hand, it's also a way of us just, you know, giving a testimony, giving God the praise for this, but also 
helping you guys who maybe are in that similar situation maybe it's a wedding maybe it's something yeah. but the point is you know that okay there are a lot of things that um are walls in your way just taking that first step is pow- powerful enough to you know just send a ripple effect down you know the path that you're about to take so yeah <sighs> yeah it's it's really emotional going yeah. back you know down the road maybe like when we do the podcast we can dig even deeper into yeah. some of these things just that we didn't want the video to be too long it probably is um, going to be but hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think that's that's the reason we did the video is yeah. just to give somebody some hope out there you know we did this and to to be honest we didn't have everything yeah um, when we started yes and we didn't want to also you know make it difficult for other people so we're trying to do everything on our own and yeah. but people came through yeah. you know without even us asking yeah. so it's it's just step out in that faith and yeah. you know, take the first step whether it's a business or mm. marriage or i don't know baby mm. i don't know yeah. yeah and one more thing i think how I'd like to close it is that remember how i started this story 2020 pandemic youtube what if we didn't start and i think what i just see from that is that at the end of the day the ideas that god gives us drop into our heart for a reason god can see the future he knows what's happening down the line like we only have a we have a limited view of the path that we're about to take but there's somebody outside who can see everything and i just got so encouraged from that that you know what anytime something drops in your heart and you feel like you need to do this thing do it you don't know what you're going to find down the line and you don't want to now be in a situation where you know things aren't working out but the big guy also is like that's why i told you to do that thing you know yeah. so a lot to take from this thing very emotional uh probably we've really shot our time but hey i think it was worth it but um yeah guys that is the truth about our wedding yeah and we really hope that maybe you were able to learn something it encouraged you and um yeah you picked something along the way anything else you want to say Yeah actually I do um there you know this is thing that I saw recently where someone is like why do interracial couples why do they always feel like they need to have a youtube channel <laughs> you know is it because of the money and I was laughing because I don't know what other people's reasons are but ours are so clear cut like yeah. this was something like an instruction and when we started we didn't know the potential of it because we never had a youtube channel before to yeah. know um and so As you can see it was like 9 months before the wedding it was an instruction mm. almost 9 months and like on the 8th or 9th month of the of starting youtube it gave birth to something that yeah. enabled us to have our wedding imagine so that that can't be just us doing Not that you know it was it was a divine instruction so yeah. as far as we know and if you're wondering why we have a youtube channel this is our instruction and so we do what we're told to do yeah yeah and uh leave the rest of the big guy upstairs <laughs> yeah yeah but that's it guys thank you for staying for such a long video um this is not like our other story times but it was very very important we did this yeah. but with that said guys um we love you like subscribe click that notification bell and keep a lock so you can you know be in touch with all the things happening in our life and with our story god bless bye bye Thank you.